things that grow quickly and easily. Hi everybody, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney and currently I am relieving as principal, which is really exciting, but super busy. So I'm going to keep today short and sweet. Well, that's my aim anyway. I always end up rambling on. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. If you have been following me on social media, you will see that this year I started up a student environment group at my school and we have been doing lots of different things around gardening with the focus that we're going to move towards a lot of sort of <clears throat> uh, citizen science sort of work with the kids. So starting with small things like, you know, weeding our gardens, uh, propagating some plants, uh, mainly succulents and focusing on things that are just within our context to make it um, manageable and achievable. Uh, so what we're doing is looking at things within our context with the aim that I would like to expand it beyond our school to their homes and then thinking more globally about the impact that we can make on the environment. So today I wanted to share with you some things that can grow quickly and easily. Um, these are just things in my home, but I've taken them to school to use with the kids as well. But I guess I wanna press upon everyone the importance of doing these things in context and doing them consistently and not just in the scope of one unit that we're studying for a term. I think it's very important environmentally, socially, consciously wise that we take care of our environment that we're making sure that our students are growing up to be global citizens, not just in our technology capabilities, but in taking care of the world that we live in. We've only got one and it's a very valuable place to live. So the hard thing for me is that, and I, you'll see this when I show some video, is that um, I rent. So in my mind, I've always thought I can't do anything in the home that I'm in. It's not mine. I really don't want to put effort and money into something that's not mine. And I don't know how long I'm going to live in it. But uh, lately, with this scope that I've been doing with the kids at school with the environment group, I wanted to obviously learn because I'm not a good gardener. This is actually the first time ever in my entire life that things have actually worked and grown. So that's kind of exciting. But I, my students are also renters as well. So there's a very good chance that they, their parents might be thinking the same thing and they don't do these kinds of things at home. So if I can teach the kids how fun it is, how achievable it is, um, hopefully I can work with the parents to do this as well, but I'd like the idea that kids are going home and saying, I know that's a succulent, we can propagate that by pulling leaves off, or, you know, I know that that will grow quickly, or things like that, if they can take it home, because essentially that's what we want our kids to do, lifelong learners, skills that they take away and put into practice in their home life. So I took some video today in our garden just to show you some of the things that grow really easily, really quickly, that you could have in the classroom, whether it's attached to a unit or not, these are things that you can have easily in your classroom okay so i'm in the backyard where we don't have any garden beds you can see behind me no garden beds because we rent so it's all grass but we've got down the back here some things growing in some pots so these beans aren't growing as quick as what they are growing out in the front yard where there's more more sun so but that's still good i mean they popped up after what a week we saw things but sunflowers are the best. They pop up beautifully. And the best part is, is that you actually see the sunflower seed stuck to the leaf when it's really small, sort of at that level there. You can still see it on it and you kind of just pluck it off. So you know for sure it's a sunflower because it's come from that seed and you can see it on there. But these ones grow really easily. And these came from a packet of bird seed. So we just chucked um, this mixed bird seed into a bunch of pots. Uh, put it in the sun, watered it, and lots of different things grew up, including grass. So now this is after we've separated the grass out of the mix. And this is now in four pots. So when I go out the front, I'll show you the ones that are out there because um, they look good as well. So we're trying to test and see the difference between our front yard and our backyard and how it goes. But they grow fast, which is really what you want in the classroom. You don't want to be waiting, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks just to see one little thing. Um, oh my gosh, the tomatoes are growing. So... That little thing there, that's the only one that started growing at the moment. So we literally cut up a tomato and laid the slices into a few different pots, put it in the sun, gave it some water. That was about two weeks ago, I think. So that's the first one I've seen that's popped up. The one at the front hasn't come up yet. So that one's done pretty well so far. 
So this is where we've got a few succulents propagating. So we kind of start with this look, the leaves, and then they start changing like this. And what you'll find is, where's an example? This one here is a good example. So you can see, ah, oh no, the leaf just actually popped off. That's not a good example, not a good example. Okay, where's one? Oh, they're all popping off. Um, oh, I'll show you this one anyway. Oh no, there's one here. So this one here, so you have the leaf, and when, after you, you pop it off, let it, oh, it's going blurry now. Let it dry, and then this will start to grow in the end, and this bigger leaf will eventually dry up and fall off yeah. as it grows little tiny roots like that. And you don't need to bury it or anything, you just pop it near some soil because the roots will stretch out and find the soil. These take longer though. So I mean, if you're looking at doing something long-term, either in your classroom or at your school, these ones will pay off because they're super cute and easy to take care of, which is the best part. So you can see this one here has got some roots as well. Those little bits that are growing out to the side there. But yeah, you've got to be in it for the long haul for these ones. So out the front yard, we've got some things in pots as well. And this is my son's first little broccoli that he's been growing. But again, everything pretty much in pots. We've got some garden beds here where we discovered a bunch of succulents, which is why I've decided to try and propagate them at school because at least I can source them from home. I don't have to pay. And then eventually you'll end up with something like this. You know that you can pot some of these ones that have grown and they'll get nice and big and we can use them later and, and keep using the, the leaves. So I found though the best way that I can propagate them is obviously by letting them do it in the garden bed that they came from. So down here, this was a much bigger plant and it was a massive mess. So we tidied it up and then I just, I took off a bunch of the leaves to let propagate. And now there's just a bunch of them sitting out here with the little bits on the end now starting to grow. I've just got a ton of them down here and they all look like this. And some of them are even starting to get the roots as well. I'm trying to source one that has the roots. Um, I can't believe it, I was looking at one this morning. Where's it gone? Okay, I can't find it, it's here somewhere. But you know, I've got other ones as well, like this, to see if roots start shooting out. Um, and I'm just kind of experimenting, I guess, with them. So, I can't believe I've lost that little one that was here this morning. But those ones are easy to do. Again, they're not fast though, which is the harder part with these ones. So I'm gonna show you something that is super fast. So we tried growing garlic. I'm going to show that to you now. So here's some of my other lovely succulents that I've been working on. But looking at the garlic, we just bought one of these. Now I tried this with packets of garlic that had already been, where the, what do you call it, the cloves had already been removed and put into a container from Aldi and it didn't work. So I'm assuming they were preserved or something. It just didn't work. So I went straight from the garlic here and then we removed, sorry, we removed the cloves and then you need to put the flat bit down to the bottom and the pointy end at the top and look at these shoots that are coming out here after a week we started so you can see some that haven't worked because they weren't immersed in the water they weren't immersed in the water properly you can see the roots are there but those ones didn't work very well so I need to rearrange them and see if there's still the possibility that they could grow but I mean look at these ones these ones are two weeks old now so these are ready for us to go and put into a pot because they've got the roots there that could go into the soil and we've got the shoots at the top there like after a week we started seeing stuff and it's really cool to watch them actually push through the top there um, some of them still had bits of like skin or something over the top of it preventing it from coming through I just gave it a little poke with a scissor uh, with scissors and then next morning you could see them shooting through this was so cool super fast and super super cool just to see them grow so tall like this and then if you use a clear glass you can see the roots down the bottom as well just to you know reinforce that importance that it's not just what grows up it's what grows down as well i've also got here a carrot we tried to do the thing you know where you stick it in water and see what grows and you can see the top there the green this is after a couple of weeks 
has actually started to grow as well. But this kind of proves to the kids you can't just grow a carrot from a carrot. You know, nothing's growing down below. That's not quite how that works. But there's still life in there. That's the whole point. There's still energy in there. There's still nutrients and something can grow from it provided it has, you know, elements that it needs such as, you know, water and sunlight. And we keep them here at, at the window where I've got these other succulents growing. Um, and then I've got some of those leaves there to see how they go and if they start propagating. Okay, so you can see that was really short and sweet. Like, I can't wait to see what happens with the garlic when we um, bury it, pot it. <laughs> I don't know the language, I'm not an expert. I watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to do this. The succulents are probably the most exciting thing for me because I didn't really know much about them before, which is, you know, probably why I failed at gardening. But um, our house is now full of all these different little succulents that are growing now. So um, that's what I'm kind of focusing on because at least I know for the kids, hey, if I don't kill it, chances are they're not going to kill it either. So it should be really, really good. But I'm going to leave it there for today. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm just going to put my button down here. Click on that to subscribe. Uh, if you thought this was interesting or you're a gardener and you're better at it than me, give the video a thumbs up. The feedback's always appreciated and I'll pop another video there. See you later, guys. Bye.